My name is Paul Donovan. From the middle of 2009 until the end of 2012, I was Chief Executive of Aircom, which is Ireland's leading telecommunications provider. In 2011, it was clear that the company faced a range of strategic challenges. Uh, these were largely borne out from the company's history. Privatised in 1999, the business had been bought and sold four times, had been underinvested, particularly in IT and network, and had been leveraged with over €4 billion Euro of debt. So working together with the board, the management team and I created an investable plan for the future that actually required uh, both significant cost reduction and at the same time a range of new revenue generation initiatives which would actually chart a clear path to profitability. The company had done a really good job over the past few years on cost reduction, reducing the total number of employees by about 2,500 down to about 6,000 and total operating expenditure down by almost a quarter. However, the real benefit to the company was, would have to come from investment in new products and services that could create sustainable revenue streams in the future and also allow for the more efficient delivery of IP-based products and services. Uh, this included the rollout to more than a million homes of a brand new fibre network, um, uh, the, uh, the creation of a new platform for the delivery of IPTV, uh, and, and also the creation of a new standalone uh, integrated billing and customer care environment that would allow the company to transform the way it went to market instead of providing individual customers with individual products actually providing them with with double triple and even quadruple play products that would enable them uh, to uh, to achieve seamless integration across all of the tele telephony needs that they have uh, by buying from Aircom so an exciting vision but one which was hugely complex in terms of delivery and for that reason, my management team and I decided that we needed some external help. As in any procurement process, uh, you have to follow a, a very set of, a strict set of protocols. So my procurement function, together with a subset of members of my senior management team, actually went out and evaluated a, a number of different vendors who could actually provide us with the resources that we needed to firstly set up a, a, a real-time program management function across the company, but also build sustainable and long-term processes that would ultimately be run by Aircom people. Um, clearly cost was a consideration, but probably not the principal consideration at this point in time. What we were actually looking for were really good people who could work together with us uh, uh, based on the fact that we were not entirely sure of what the status was ourselves on our key programmes to actually get things very much under control uh, and then to make sure that we, we could actually underpin what were very aggressive milestones in terms of delivery. One of the things that you buy with Mentor is uh, really both deep and wide experience of managing change in the telecommunications industry. Uh, and not only that, you actually get that experience not just from a company, but from the people who are the principals of the company. Uh, and, and I was very clear that with Mentor I was getting the A team, whereas with Consultancy B or Consultancy C, that might not necessarily have been the case. And so urgent and deep was our need, uh, and uh, Mentor really rose to the challenge of providing us with some really seasoned individuals at very short notice to be able to work with us. Clearly, when you introduce any external consultancy into the business, uh, and they are going to be interacting with literally hundreds of people who are managing programs, that's, that's one thing. When they are actually uh, charged with the establishment of the program office itself and effectively become the junction box through which all change in the company happens, it's absolutely vital, vital that you have a proper engagement process so that the senior leaders in the company, beyond the SMT, who with me were absolutely convinced of the need for the introduction of a program office, uh, was, was, was really about communication and engagement. Uh, and so uh, senior management team members, myself and members of Mentor, actually ran a whole series of meetings and workshops outlining in absolute detail why we felt we needed to make this important change how it would happen and who would be involved. And clearly the, uh, the opportunity of actually bringing people for, into the program office from other parts of the business creates a group of people who can actually act as ambassadors. So that whole process of the management of change around this new initiative and deep and frequent communication are absolutely critical. 
as in any change management process, the very first thing you have to do is to understand your baseline. Where are you? So part of the mentor approach was actually about going out, talking with people very widely in the organisation and actually baselining each project. Did we have a proper set of, uh, of objectives and goals for the project? Was there adequate resourcing? Uh, what were the gaps? What needed to be done to change those, uh, to change those gaps into uh, a more confidence-building environment? And then at the same time as to looking at individual programs, actually looking across the organisation about how the establishment of the program office could actually integrate and dovetail quite closely with the existing processes of running the day-to-day -day business. Because at the end of the day, in any business, you're fundamentally challenged for resources. Uh, the most important decision that you can make is what you do and what you don't do. Uh, and they were able quite quickly to provide us with that gap analysis on the one hand, to provide recommendations as to how they should be closed, uh, and actually uh, an understanding which we did not appreciate at the time of the huge interdependencies between the different programs and the fact that a missed milestone on one could actually have significant consequences on another program. And so we were able really for the first time to be able to look at the process of change in a holistic kind of a way. One of the reasons why I think uh, mentor do get hired by companies that have recognised that they face significant operational challenges, be that the launch of a new company um, in the telecommunications industry or the management of a very comprehensive transformation programme, uh, is that the most senior people in the company know that the organisation really needs to face up to the reality of what it's doing. So unlike a strategy consultancy who can give you a report and then just disappear into the wide blue yonder, um, uh, these guys are very practical. And I think the thing which I appreciated most was the ability to actually roll up the sleeves and working together with people in the business, really get involved in the things that matter. And candidly, through an, uh, uh, what we call the change management executive, which was really um, a, a fortnightly meeting looking at our change agenda, to come forward with the good, the bad, and the ugly, and to not actually flinch from that, uh, because there were some things that we actually had to face up to, some choices that we needed to make if we were to actually optimise the outputs from the inputs uh, that, we, that we had applied. And, and I think the fact that you are dealing with the principles of the company by and large does mean that they are genuine stakeholders in living their own customer proposition and I found that Mentor were pretty true to that from, from start to finish. With Mentor you get uh, deep, deep industry experience, a very strong track record, um, access to the principles of the business, an uncompromising and very honest approach to assessment of the situation and the application of some really good tools and techniques to ensure that highly interdependent projects can be delivered.